This is the plaintiff, Brenda Caraballo. She says she bought a car from the defendant, was driving it down the street a week later, and the sunroof blew off. She's so lucky the car behind her was able to swerve out of the way and avoid the thing. Because if it hadn't, there would have been a dangerous accident. The arrogant, condescending defendant sold her a hazardous car that wouldn't pass inspection. And she's suing him for the $4,865. She's out. This is the defendant, Jonathan. He says the sunroof is not covered under the plaintiff's warranty, but he was willing to help her out anyway. That was until she became belligerent and demanded he pay for the entire thing. The plaintiff even went to the attorney general with her unfounded complaints. So bringing him to court is just a last desperate attempt from her to get someone to pay for her sunroof. He's accused of being sunburned. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the dock of the plaintiff bought a car from the defendant and the sunroof blew off a week later. But the defendant says the sunroof isn't covered under the warranty. It's the case of the sunroof also rises. Thank you, Douglas. Welcome Brenda Caraballo? Yes. You are suing Jonathan, the business that Jonathan works for. You've asked me not to mention the name of the business nor your last name. For $4,865 that you want returned to you as a result of them uh, selling you a car that you say is a lemon. Mm -hmm. Tell me what happened. Well, I went on the 5th of March and I purchased a 2005 Nissan Altima from Jonathan, which he did not say he was the salesman. He said he was the owner of the dealership. And did you tell her you were the owner? Not at all. Are you the owner? Not at all. Were you trying to impress her? Not at all. Because she's kind of cute. Are you going to say I, not I at do, all? I do well for myself. Uh, you do what? I do well for myself. You do well for yourself? Go ahead. So when we took it for the test drive, I realized that it had like a little draft. And he said there was not going to be any problem with that. He what said, draft? From the sunroof. It just sounded like there was a draft. Did you say something about it? I did. What did you say? I said, what is that? Where's that noise coming from? And he goes, oh, it should be nothing. We'll take care of it. I said, okay. So we went Take back. care of it how? Well, I guess it was supposed to just get sealed. It was something minor, he said to me. Okay. Um, we went back to the dealership. I also realized that the lights were not, like, you know, after a while, the headlights start looking dim and wear and tear type. So he said he would also have that all fixed up for me when I picked it up the following day. Okay, when you picked it up the following day, was it fixed up? Nothing. Okay, so, but you picked up the car? Well, I really thought he was going to actually fix it. I thought there was not going to be any problem. Do you have any emails it. back and forth with mm -hmm. them or texts? I do. Let me see them. Did you test drive it with her? I think she went by herself. Right, you the and her? The day of the purchase. I think she went by herself. Were car. you ever in the car with her? Well, when, when I introduced her to the car, when I was showing her. And then you just let some stranger take the car? You well, don't go with I them? mean, most dealers let. No, customers. they don't. Most dealers don't let. Most dealers are sitting their butts right next to me, yakking, yakking, yakking about what a great purchase this will be. That's usually what. And I've never had somebody say, yeah, take the keys, go for a spin. You see, when you make a customer feel comfortable with the car, it makes them, you know, drive a little better. They can talk amongst themselves if they dislike the car. When they sell this person Are you next suggesting to them, that you let anybody who anybody. goes. Anybody, does your boss know that? We take licenses and let them drive their car. We do it to everybody. Okay, so you were never in the car with her? Not in the moment when she touched her, no. How about any other moment? When I introduced her to the car, when I was trying to sell her the car, yeah. Okay, did, you, did she point out to you a draft? Not at all. Not at all. She touched off the car, she checked the sunroof, the car was meant, she paid for it. She came the next day to pick it up. And then, was there uh, any paperwork in this transaction? Of course. Mm -hmm. So you're driving around and how soon does a problem happen? Well, the problem um, Because if you start driving week, and you hear the draft, then you drive right back. Well, I had spoke to him about it, and he said he was going to fix it. So that whole week before... But why are you taking the... If he's going to fix it and he hasn't fixed it, why do you... Because I paid for it already, and I already had it registered and insured. So I figured I was going to take him on his word that he was going to have this fixed for me. So I just... I didn't think to put it down in writing. How'd that work out? Bad. What day did you buy the car? On the 5th. Of March? Yes. All the texts I'm seeing are on the 16th, 19th. It's well after the fact. Where are the texts from that week? Well, there's a text there from the 9th. 
It says I close at six. Right, I called him and I asked him, what time are you gonna be closing so I could bring the car? He said that he usually closes at six. So then he didn't get in touch with then me. Then on the 11th, you say, sorry, got a little busy. Right, because I was calling Where are all him. your texts and answers to these texts? I was just calling him and leaving him voicemails. Okay, then he texts you, let me call the guy. What guy? Well, we took the car to get appraised. Well, after, she, after I have the voicemail on my phone when she called me, stating that she was coming back on her way from New York. It was like 12 in the, 12 at night, one in the morning, stating that her son roof flew off her car. So it was like at one in the morning. So I'm half asleep. I told her, bring the car over the next day. We'll look at it. But I never promised we were going to get paid for it because that's not covered in, in our state. We took it to get appraised, which was, I think, the appraised. You mean to, when you say appraised, you mean to get an estimate? To get an estimate. How much okay. would it be to, re, to, to, to replace it, to fix it? Okay. It came up to like 600. I don't remember the exact number. And okay. The and by the way, how was it that you discovered that the, sun, the sunroof, what happened while you were driving? Okay. Interesting case. If the sunroof blows off and causes an accident, um, is the dealer that sold the car responsible? I think it should be the manufacturer's problem. And uh, unless the dealership knew that there was something wrong with the, with the sunroof itself, the manufacturer's yeah, lied. They sold the car. They sold it to the guy. Yeah, no, it's a defective. Should yeah, they, sh is, is, quickly, is the dealer responsible? Yeah. Okay, going inside the car room. I was driving back on the highway and the sunroof went flying off almost like a flying a, saucer just ripped right off. It actually almost caused an accident and I pulled over and I was shaking up and I didn't know what happened and the gentleman that had to merge out of the lane to avoid getting hit by the car pulled behind me, asked me if I was okay. I was like so nervous thinking that it hit his car and luckily it didn't. We, we checked his car. He just told me, you know, be safe and I just went home. You didn't go back him. to get the stupid sunroof, right? No, it was already too far down. That's the kind of thing I would have done in the middle of that. <laughs> that would be so unsafe. Okay. So, she, yeah, so she calls you, she tells you that you're going to get it uh, estimated. She's, she talks about bringing you the car on the 16th. The 15th was actually when it happened, that the sun was flying off, so. Oh, well then your calls on the 9th and the 11th and the 13th were about what? About getting it fixed, about him saying that he, the, the guy that he's talking about is the mechanic. To get what fixed? To get, to see, to fix whatever the draft is that's coming from the sunroof. Because you're noticing the draft while you're driving it? No, 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 I had already mentioned it to him. So he, he was aware of the headlights and the sunroof. The, if the thing fell off on the 15th and on the 13th, two days before that, you're telling her, let me call the guy, then she's alerting you to a problem and then the problem ends up becoming a huge problem because the thing I mean, flies off? It's a sunroof, it could have been open. <laughs> it could have been just slightly open. It was March. It was very cold. Um, well, right. It could have been open, then she'd close it. I mean, that's not going to be I mean, no, well, it's not what happened. What, so night. she was alerting you that, hey, this is a problem, right? I don't, to be honest. Well, yeah, to be honest, all, all I virtually insist remember, upon it when I put I you under oath. This was such a long time ago. All I can remember, I got her voicemail on my phone on March 15th. Let me hear, your, let me hear the voicemail you have. Did you two start seeing each other after the sale? No. <laughs> Did you hang out together? It was it was it was no time. Did you of hang out together? No. Though. He was, you know, asking me let's hang out and everything. Oh, and I, I was asking. And I, you know, I said sure. 2 hours I was done. I didn't like his attitude and <sighs> I left. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and no, I'm going to take all of them out. Listen, um I was driving back from New York and um everything was good, but when I was in Enfield, I heard like a crazy noise, and it was my sunroof. Now I don't want to cause you no problems, and I don't want you to think I'm cool. Like I'm not calling you for anything but the fact that my car was making a noise. I could have probably put somebody else's life in jeopardy by the sunroof going off. And but at the end of the day, I want you to understand, whether you knew about the sunroof, I already told you that the sunroof was a little loose, and you said it was no big deal. But for it to go flying off, it's a little big deal. Now, I'm going to go to see you before or after I go to work tomorrow. But I need that to get handled because right now, I have no sunroof, which that is going to be a problem. And I don't want to cause you a problem, but I expect you to understand I'm not calling you 
for nothing but my sunroof. <laughs> so please call me back in the morning when you get this message. Why else would she be calling me at one o'clock in the morning? Because. I think her son. I need that signal. There's a reason why she's saying okay. twice that she's not Thank calling you. me for oh, nothing. Oh, because you're just so irresistible. Oh, the woman's obviously angry that her sunroof flew off. Man, come on. That's, exactly That's all she angry. talks about. That is not a sexy phone call. That is a. He's not even my cup of tea. Okay, with everybody's got to stop trying to insult each other and, and let's get to the facts here. That's I have an issue with the following. Okay, first of all, only what is warranted is warranted. So he's saying, well, Judge, we warrant all these other things. We don't warrant that. That's fine. But if you say you're going to fix something, then you got to fix it. And what worries me is that before the sunroof goes flying off, I have texts from you saying, let me call the guy. And you're obviously arranging to fix something that you felt was your responsibility to fix. That makes me believe her when she says, I brought it to his attention before I bought it. And frankly, if the folks who employ you are within the sound of my voice... I don't think it's appropriate for a salesman to hang out with one of the customers and then something like this happens, they end up in court. And, the, and half the discussion is about who liked who. You didn't even hear you know? my story, though. Stop talking. $627.38. That's my judgment. Thank you, man. You not even know what's going on. All right, coming out of the courtroom after losing the case like that, what is it you have to say? I mean, the judge didn't really hear me out. It's, it basically seemed like she was favoring her from the beginning. I was trying to tell her the story. We didn't do anything. Loser more. usually feels that way. Well, yeah, you would say that because you work for her. So, but I understand that. You're, she's your boss. You would say that. Have a mm -hmm. good day. Yeah, you have a good one, have too. Have a good day. All right, step on in here. How about you? What do you have to say here? I'm, he was brilliant. Yeah, well, I'm just happy it's all over with and I uh, can get my son will fixed. Mm -hmm. Then I could just sell the car and get How smart was it to give him some of your personal time after this whole transaction? Actually, it was not even worth an hour or two or even anything. He's just ar arrogant, very arrogant. And I'm, I'm, You're the one who I'm, went out with him. I'm not actually very happy I did any kind of business with him. He's not anyone that I would want anybody to do business with. Okay. Harvey? You know, I got to tell you something. She's saying that, you know, this defendant um, agreed to fix it before she got the car and he didn't fix it. The judge believed her. I think his own conduct kind of sunk him.